It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Weekly Media Roundup. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden. The show, 5.45 Live on Deck tonight. We'll, of course, talk Vermont Yankee. That seems unavoidable with this Tuesday's shocking news. Plus, we'll tell you where to get the latest on the U.N. chemical weapons investigation findings in Damascus and what that'll mean for America. And it's now two years past since Tropical Storm Irene ravaged the area. We'll take a look back and see where progress was made and where it wasn't. All that and more. Remember, we do it all in 15 minutes or less. So make sure you stick with us right here on 545 Live. so much pain. There's flooding went everywhere. The water has to go somewhere. But I hope that we will recognize today the extraordinary recovery of every single Vermonter in our time of need. It's not Disneyland. <laughs> Welcome back to this August 30th, 2013 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden here to take another stab at PCTV's now weekly media roundup, the full 15-minute cable broadcast at week's end to gather together the highlights from uh, the week's web video releases. Now, that was footage of Hurricane Irene. We'll return to that story in a moment, including the governor's Wilmington visit this week, as well as the latest FEMA news. But first, it was at 8.30 a.m. this Tuesday that workers at Vermont Yankee in Vernon were gathered together to hear the news that Entergy, the plant's owners, would be voluntarily closing down operations in Vermont effective quarter four of the coming year. The story, which first reached the public in Vermont via the Wall Street Journal, uh, and was confirmed later that afternoon by members of the Intergy administration at a press conference, uh, has left the public to make sense of what has truly become a media frenzy. We began our comments today with the Vermont team this morning to deliver this painful news and to answer their questions. They're a dedicated, resilient group of men and women, but today was very clearly a tough day for them and for us. Financial experts may have been predicting it for years, but the employees of Entergy Nuclear Vermont Yankee first learned of the plant's 2014 closure plans early Tuesday morning, with members of the Entergy administration publicly confirming the story that afternoon. Vermont Yankee will remain under the oversight of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission through the remaining operation, plant shutdown, through the fourth quarter of 2014. This was really uh, the last decision that we wanted to make, but we feel like we had thoroughly evaluated all the various scenarios and options, and unfortunately it's painfully clear that this asset is simply not uh, financially viable. With a fresh Second Circuit win in New York and a twice federally backed court-approved 20-year license extension in hand, Plus, a delay-plagued certificate of public good ruling retreating to the shadows when could have easily speculated things were going Vermont Yankees' way. But Tuesday's statement from Entergy, which cited the natural gas boom's effect on energy prices as playing a key role in the decision to close up shop in Vermont a full 18 years earlier than federally mandated, has shed new light on the financial viability of the aging reactor. Setting off a week-long media storm, as news outlets, affinity groups, local business strategists, and concerned residents struggle to sift through a tsunami of thoughts and opinions. One of the country's oldest and most controversial nuclear plants has announced it will close late next year. Entergy Corporation says it will shut down the Vermont Yankee nuclear power station by the end of 2014. The company has been battling the state since 2010 when the Vermont Senate voted against having them operate for another 20 years. Governor Shumlin said his heart goes out to Yankees workers, about 40% of whom live in Vermont. When it closes, what will happen to New England states that rely on the energy it produces? Can you talk about the significance, how this was finally shut down? Reacting to that announcement today, Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin said this is the right decision for Vermont, and it's the right decision for Vermont's clean energy future. The right decision for Vermont and it's the right decision for Vermont's clean energy future. Certainly now, um, our taxes will just skyrocket. To me, it vindicates the state talking about economic viability and reliability. And while the plant's adversaries remain stringent with their optimism, there are plenty of positive stances to match the now heavily vocalized concerns over the fate of the local economy. I think we can learn by looking at what has happened in other communities that had reactors. 
after the reactor shut down. Real estate values went up in the area because the reactor wasn't there anymore. We view this as an opportunity to grow jobs and economic opportunities for those that are being impacted. I think we're moving forward in a positive way into the future. We have a great delegation. We have an excellent governor. Brattleboro has one of the best small towns in the United States to live. And that's what we should be focusing on. And with another 14 months of scheduled operation at the plant and a proposed 60 years of nuclear waste safe store, the story of Vermont and its lone nuclear reactor is hardly over. For BCTV and 545 Live, I'm Roland Boyden. And while they were marked with our new full video available graphics, I'll just take a moment to remind everybody out there that Entergy's full press conference, as well as the complete edition of Montpelier Connection with Wyndham County legislators reflecting upon the newly announced closing of Vermont Yankee, can all be streamed at your leisure at brattleborotv.org. All right, we'll move on now with uh, plenty to talk about here in Brattleboro. But first, a chemical weapons attack in Damascus earlier this week has turned all eyes to Syria as the U.S. attempts to uh, solicit the backing of an international coalition before seeking any military action against Syria and its president. With the French continuing to push for retribution, a no vote from the British Parliament has given rise to questions of just who should be held responsible. Now, for more on this uh, ever pressing issue, you can head to uh, reformer.com, the Battleboro Reformers official website where they've got uh, an international news stream. In fact, uh, let's fire it up here for a second on the screen, go into the split screen so you can take a look, uh, get uh, a glance at the latest headlines there, which uh, include everything that's going on on the world stage. Uh, a focus best uh, left aside here on 545 Live, but one that uh, is important to everyone in this area nonetheless. Uh, if you head to their website, you can see that uh, there's a tab here that says live updates as the world decides what to do about Syria. And with that, we'll move on and talk Irene. Hard to believe it was more than two years ago that the worst storm in the state's history brought the waters of the Whetstone up into the streets of Brattleboro, but two years ago it was. You caught a glimpse of it in the intro, but we'll take a moment now to do a proper flashback to our impromptu 545 Live coverage from ankle deep in the waters of the Whetstone, now two years ago. This is Brattleboro, Vermont. I'm on Flat Street here, and as you can see behind me here, the street is completely flooded. You have people up to their knees in water here, cars that are completely submerged. Route 9, roughly from Route 91 over to Bennington is closed off. There's flooding everywhere. Just a few things to wrap up here. We'll harken back to another BCTV webisode. That's our video calendar. This interactive release goes up every Thursday at youtube.com slash brattleborotv, brattleborotv.org, and on our Facebook page. Annotations on YouTube allow it to be clickable, so you can actually jump ahead and look at different video clips uh, promoting surrounding uh, area events. And you can also go to those websites to get more details. Let's take a look at what I had to say about it. On it's Labor Day weekend, which means there'll be a series of townwide closings. You can find out more, including when to put out your trash, compost, and recycling, at the town's official website, brattlebro.org. And uh, of course, it being Labor Day, that means there's a series of festivities themed in that sense going on, including uh, Guilford's annual, 48th annual Friends of Music performance this Saturday night, followed by orchestra tours uh, on Sunday at 2 p.m. You can uh, click to get all the details on that or take a look at the video now. And we'll wrap up the video calendar with the Dusk Till Dawn dance at the Gibson Aiken Center, which starts on Sunday at 8 p.m. and goes all the way till 7 a.m. the next morning. That does it for another edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll let you get out there and enjoy this long Labor Day weekend. But remember, we'll be back next Friday, 545 p.m., right here on BCTV Channel 8. In the interim, you can find us at brittleborotv.org and youtube.com slash brittleborotv uh, to keep abreast of all the happenings with our web releases throughout the week. In the meantime, stay safe out there. I'm Roland Boyden. Night, everybody. All right.
right. Uh, Thursday, high of 40, low of 24. <laughs> yeah. What did Miss Claus say to Santa during a storm? I have no idea. Come look at the rain, dear. Uh, <laughs> Back to the desk. Uh, thank you, Greta and Tyler, and I have no comment for that joke.